Welcome to the podcast episode, I don't know, of season Who Cares. This is Luke, <laughs> Spooky Lukey. This is Anonymous Disco 2, and when you said that, I I have no idea what episode this I is. I don't even know. Who knows? Who knows what we've released, what we're doing? We just keep pumping them out there. I just kind of look at the last one, and then that base the uh, title for the next one. Yeah, and if you want to take a, a peek behind the curtains at all, I mean... We uh we have tons of podcasts that we record and and some of them don't make it up. So if you're listening to a podcast and you're like, well, this sucks, so the audio quality is awful. Just know that there are much worse ones. Yeah, deep yeah, in my are, laptop. These are the ones. It's not like we just put out everything we record. These are these are the best of the best. They're, these are the best. This is the good shit. I still think we need to kind of do a lost podcast kind of thing. Like I don't even know if we should maybe like put them all like kind of do what like Ricky and. And Carl does and stuff where they do like the best bits. Like like Carl yeah. to like take like segments of all the best lost ones and we just kinda create one ultimate lost episode. Yeah, and we do little like sound bites for it, like, Oh, wasn't that funny what we were just talking about? Or uh it's like, Yeah, I totally understand that now onto this thing. You know, to kind of segue yeah. into yeah, these yeah. random Host- clips. Clips of us hosted by us. Yeah. Nothing, exactly. Nobody likes anything better than that. Yeah. Well, you know, 24 hour Luke and Alex, baby. That's uh, that's what, what you the, want. That's what the people are asking for. And I mean, really, I mean, let's get right to it. We're in no better time right now than to have, uh, you know, to have shit to listen to or watch or whatever. Everybody's looking for s- stuff to do. So stuff what a great do. time to tune into a podcast and kill an hour of the quarantine during this COVID-19 COVID kind of rhyming. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, and to kill an hour of our time, kill an hour of your time. Uh, you know what? Why not? You know, throw it on, throw it on. Go back and listen to all the podcasts. Yeah, if you, if this is your first time tuning in, pause this. Go back, listen to the first season and whatever we have up to this point. There's lots out there. The ups and downs of the podcast. Now, I think we have talked a little bit uh, about the coronavirus. This has blown up. I think our, I think our last show we were kind of like, "Oh, this Corona thing's coming around," but I don't. I don't think we were in quarantine yet. No, no, it's it's <laughs> blown up quite a bit. And no, uh, I say quarantine, but I mean like you're still going to work. I'm still going to work. You're an essential worker, as the Alex heads know. I uh, I'm I'm uh, I work at Walmart, and uh, they've deemed that at least at this point it's an essential business. Uh, so I'm still going in. Where and are we here? This is April 3rd? April 3rd. Friday, April 3rd April today. 3rd. So about a month because they started quarantining everybody at the mm-hmm. beginning-ish of March. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, Walmart's been nuts. But today, I tell you, I tell you, today was the craziest fucking I- I've seen that store ever. Two different fights broke out at Walmart today. Two different fights of customers. Customers right. fighting with one another. Um, you know, they're only letting a certain amount of people in the stores. They, uh, you know, are ca- counting heads and uh, only using one exit and entrance. You know, and everyone's going to wear gloves, masks, and it's a fucking scene, man. It's a fucking scene. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a pit. It's a pit of uh, people freaking out and yelling and trying to get their groceries and stocking up on toilet paper. It's fucking nuts, man. Mm-hmm. It's fucking nuts. And uh, lining up to get into grocery stores, if you have to, you know, lining up to do anything, but staying six feet apart, it's crazy. We're It's fucking crazy. I'm supposed to be at the casino working, but the casinos have been closed for ages. They were like the first thing to close down. Yeah, they closed before like everything even got all closey closed down. You know, they closed early times. Yeah. Well, that's like the worst place for social interaction and everything everyone's so close up there's no windows there's no ventilation oh exactly and you just pack everybody into fucking butt heads and asses the elbows and, oh, yeah so anyway hoping i can get back to work soon but who fuck is this crazy shit man well that's you know you know at this point you're not working i'm working you know and and there's only one of us making income so it's like you know, there's still a you know our our landlord's still wanting rent. She just called. 
She literally just called. We just missed a call. Get out of town. Get out of town. How fucking weird is that? How fucking weird is that? Oh, yeah. So we got to sort that out after this podcast. Yeah. Fucking. Fucking cunt. Landlords, man. Yeah. Honestly, the thing is. She sent me a message a week before the end of last month, like prepping everybody, basically. Like, you better pay your rent. Just knowing this bullshit was going to ensue. Yeah, it's like where do it's you? It's like we all off? got payments. We all got fucking shit to do. Like we're yeah. in the middle of a crazy time. Like just, just chill. Yeah, exactly. Just Can't chill. Be- like she's gonna get her rent. I believe that it is unpatriotic to like just totally bail out on your bills and and all that shit, especially during a pandemic. It's not the time to to freeload. You know, this is a time we got to pull together. It's like, what if everybody thought like that during World War II? You can't. You got to pull together as a nation. Mm. If you can pay your bills, you pay them. That being said, well, that's you worded exactly the the right way there. If you can, if and that's a big word there. Exactly, because you know. I'm saying that being said, it's like if your rent is nine hundred dollars. I mean, I know there are supplements from the government that are coming out and stuff, but say you're not living off that. Just your rent's nine hundred dollars here. You're not working. You're going through the struggle of trying to fucking get unemployment get some sort of supplement and stuff and you get you get your last paycheck or you get you look at your account and you go okay well i got nine hundred dollars i can give that to my landlord and then how am i going to eat for like the next who god knows when and and do anything how am i going to do any of that shit so as much as it's like i'm going to do as much as i can but this is a time where i need to look at for myself as well because mm. she's sending me these messages, like i got payments to make i got like everybody's got payments everyone's to make. got payments everybody's got to do this fucking shit i'm sorry Mm-hmm. I'm I, like if this was any other day like I'm not trying to evade my responsibilities here I'm trying to prioritize mm-hmm. and and I, I totally agree man um, but uh, you know let's uh, let's get out of the darkness let's get out of the darkness because you know let, let's all you've just been hearing as That's a little a little PSA from the house of dope though mm-hmm. you know we're here for you and uh, and uh, you know Help everyone stay safe. Do listen don't to be the, an asshole. Don't be an asshole. Be nice to people who work in grocery stores. Be nice to doctors and nurses and you know stay safe out there and listen listen to the professionals. Not Luke and I. Nonetheless though, let's get out of the weeds. Out of the weeds. And uh what have you been so I've been working at Walmart. What have I been doing? Cra- what the fuck have you been the doing? The thing is is I feel like a tradition of the podcast is that I come on here and I have very vague things that I'm doing. Like, I'm not really doing anything. <laughs> you know, I usually come on here and it's like, oh, you know, I got the rabbit. Like, I usually have these very boring stories. But for the last while, I mean, I've had nothing to do other than, like, be here and try to kind of find things to fill my time and shit. So, I mean, I've, I've got a lot going on. How, how at, this, at this point, how long have you been unemployed approximately? I've been unemployed since the 6th of January. Okay, so that's what four months now yeah approximately i got my job at the end of february Mm -hmm. so i was officially like just no job just sailing my sailing away there for uh you know a month a month or two month and a half and then i got the job at the casino went through all the rigmarole and then boom covid hits everything closes down like a day before i'm supposed to like go in and train it's bullshit this is also the casino too so there's all the all the rigging the oh yeah man i had to apply for licenses and do this and send this and then i gotta go in and get this paid for and stamp that and cross this and scan this and three trips to the library to print shit yeah they <laughs> we don't have yeah we don't have a, <laughs> fucking don't have printer. a printer so i'm taking three trips to the library to go and print this and then they send something back and scan that and yeah anyway, they go through it all and then it's like Tomorrow's your first day, and then I get an email like, oh, all the casinos are closed down. Yeah. We'll be in touch. They got to make sure you're not fucking Danny Ocean. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) They got to make sure you're not Danny Ocean. Exactly. So that (laughs) happened like mid-February, and and, I mean, I've been under quarantine since then. But what have you been doing? But what have I been doing? Well, I think I talked a little bit about it on the last show, is that Dreams has been taking up a big part of my life as part of my gaming life. Thank God for Dreams. Thank God for Dreams. Thank God for Dreams. Uh, Dreams was a huge thing. I'm glad I got that. That came out on Valentine's Day. So, I mean, that gives you an idea. I think I played it for about two weeks before shit really hit the fan, and it was like, oh, God, I'm going to really have to hunker down and play this for a while now. Uh, So that's great. If anybody doesn't know or didn't listen to the last podcast, this is basically a video game maker. Uh, similar to like Little Big Planet, Mario Maker meets like Sims meets like Sim City. It's fucking crazy. Like, times a million. Though. Times a billion. It's yeah. like Photoshop on crack. It's amazing. It's like 
if you like design and you like art and all that shit, get yourselves a copy of Dreams. Because I'm not even a video game guy. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about me. I'm not That's what's huge game. about it. And that it speaks to a whole new audience of, like you said, of people who just want to design shit. But also, if you're a video game lover, it's fucking awesome. I love it, too. It's fun as hell. Not only just playing other people's creations, but sitting down and doing it yourself. Because it, it, it sounds complex. Like, when you first get your hands on it, you and I both were like... This is hard. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this, but you, you go give it a date or two, and you, it starts to become yeah, you pretty. Start easy. to pick up the skills and, and and work away at it. It's it's great. So and there's a music element to it. It's got like a, a whole. It's like Garage Band. Imagine Garage Band is just an element of this game. So if you just want to sit and play music, yeah, all day, the music you can alone do that. is crazy, crazy. So I mean, that's been a huge part of my life. And there's these things they have called community jams, and you know what I'm talking about here. I know I'm what talking, you're talking about, about this yeah. to the audience. Tell the audience about it. Tell the audience. Community Jams is basically... I mean, the thing about Dreams as well is that it's a complete network like YouTube or something. So if you make a video game in it, you can post it. Other people can play it. You can see other people's profiles, all this kind of stuff. But something that the game designers have done is create this thing called the Community Jam. And every two weeks, there's a new one. You have two weeks to complete it. It's basically just like they give you a theme. You create something in that theme. Other people vote on it, and you might come out... Uh, you know, winning uh, one of these, basically these art contests. But it's like video games. It's it's amazing. Anybody who ever wanted to be a video game creator or tester, anybody kid who had that dream, dreams is making it possible. <laughs> Very nice. I think there was a story about. Uh, I think it was the guy who did um, Blade, Blade Gunner. Gunner. Blade Actually, Gunner. ended up getting a a, a job from. Yeah, that. some like um, Norwegian game company or something. Some sort of like Scandinavian gaming company. Ended up hiring this dude after like he made this game. And I don't think he had any background at all. He was just really good at this game and really just had an eye for detail and shit. Yeah, and the game's great too. Like it's it's really like professional. Is he you know, went as far as even to make like loading screens and fucking all that shit for it. I mean, I picked the game up I think for like forty bucks on the day it came out. So I mean and yeah, there's that's probably new. already a used copy. There's probably already like those people that went out and bought it and it was just not their scene and they've traded it in and you can go get this game for like twenty five bucks somewhere probably. Yeah, give it a whirl at the very least. It's great. Uh so uh, I mean speaking, Dreams has been a huge thing. What else? Totally. No, I was just gonna say if we're uh speaking game and I've been uh, doing a little game myself with the uh, Eldest Quarantine ship. Uh, Plicked up Death Stranding. Death Stranding. Now this, this is, is the Hideo Kojima game. This is the Hideo Kojima game, and he did uh, Metal Gear Solid and uh, PT Silent Hill. Yep, PT did PT. Fucking awesome games. I've only ever played like a PT and uh, one of the one of the Metal Gears, but I really fucking like Death Stranding. It's uh, it's a lot of fun, but I gotta tell you, fucking. So I paid, I bought it on the PlayStation Store, eighty dollars new, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, just I think it was yesterday, went on and there was like spring sale. What do you think's the first thing I see there for fifty percent off? Death Stranding. Death Stranding for forty, 40 bucks. bucks. I almost had a fucking heart attack. I was. I just, I honestly, my heart sunk to the bottom of my stomach. I was just like, fuck, if I wait another week. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm i trying not to think about it too much. I'm trying not to think about it. But you know what? It, it is what it is, man. I mean, I'm one of those kind of people. It's like, if I want something and I'm going to make something, it's like, you go out and get it. And if certain items are on sale, you get them. But if not, it's like, I'm still making this fucking dish. Because this reminds me of my girlfriend. My girlfriend is like this, where she's like, Everything's about the deal. Like she almost gets like orgasmic over a, a, good, <laughs> a good deal at a store. I feel that though. And you know, like, but I mean, like, I'm talking about you're talking about an eighty dollar video game. She goes in and grapes are ten cents cheaper a pound, and she's <laughs> fucking losing her mind. She's like, I bought all those grapes. Yeah, they're in my crisper now. It's like, but you had them. You're yesterday. not gonna eat them. Craving <laughs> grapes, yeah. all right? Whatever. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know. Like, at a certain point, you got to just do what you crave, do what you want. Don't worry about the sale, but. You know, if that is a heartbreaker, that is a heartbreaker. I was heartbroken by it. Um, but I don't know. There's some people who just are just look for the art of the deal and, uh, and the art of the deal and fucking just just extreme couponers. Yeah, man. Well, Walmart is the, the fucking best place to see that. It's like coupon Mecca. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it's crazy. Some mm -hmm. people who come in. Yeah. Um, well, right now, there's obviously all these limits on, like, toilet paper is one per person. Water bottles are one per person. Because everyone, you know, needs water and toilet paper. And Anyways. So, so yeah. So, it's uh, they're all one per person. But these, like, 
you know people are coming in now and they're price matching them as well as like uh uh, like coming in with like their mothers, like dragging their eighty-year-old mothers. Out they're of, getting one too. He's like, they're getting one too. There, I saw there was this person behind me the other day, a cashier behind me, and uh, they were like, "Oh, sorry, sorry, it's one per person, one per person." He's like, "This is my mother, mom. Get your get your license. Get your license. Okay, you look, see that." different addresses different people okay going to different households and it's like okay now and then they got the whole family out and doing all this shit and it's just like jesus christ like are you just doing this because like this is fun for you it's fun to kind of spite the groceries it's just fun to kind of just get around it like do you need this much toilet paper yeah how'd that whole fucking thing start like i know people have been talking about covid19 and toilet paper like it's fucking you know that's the barnes and noble but like (laughs) It's like what, like what, where, how did it all start? Did... Well, it's just a hot commodity. And when people hear, you know, they got to, they got to bomb shelter it up for a while and stuff. That's just one of the first things people go for. Yeah. And, uh, and then it snowballs, right? Because there's well, yeah, all the there's panickers, a vicious cycle. And then there's the people that like legit just need a thing of toilet paper. Yeah. So they go out and then they tell their friend and then everybody just starts freaking out. There's going to be no toilet paper. And that just becomes like this huge thing. Well, where my mindset has been at all this is that I'm kind of getting that vicious cycle where like, I'm not the kind of guy I don't, I don't feel the need to stock up or buy more than I need to. But it's, you get that kind of idea where it's like, I want to get it before it sells out. Yeah. And there's something, there's something like, I mean, it always feels good to bring home a bag of groceries, but right now bringing home a bag of groceries, like you feel like, like a scavenger in the wasteland and you just made it home with your goods. You're like, Oh fuck. Oh dude. You when I made it through some death. Claws <laughs> yeah, exactly. to get those chicken fingers home, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I uh, mean, honestly fucking, I feel like Leon goddamn Kennedy when I go into fucking Walmart. Like, I just feel like it's like, like I'm it's fucking the end of days. I'm the last hope, last resistance against this fucking I I apocalypse. Enough space in my inventory for a can of fava beans. <laughs> yeah, and you just get it out of that store, and you just feel like king of the world. Like. Yeah, man. Um, but speaking of quarantine, also we've been uh watching a lot of shit, watching tons of shit. Well, why don't we cue this up with uh one of our oldest, one of our you know tried and true what everybody uh, tunes in cornerstone. for cornerstone the cornerstone this is house on the movies house on the movies what are you watching probably everything can you watch it tonight house on the movies yeah quarantine edition quarantine edition this means of we've house been watching I mean, anybody that knows us, we usually watch stuff like we're in quarantine all the time. Yeah, you know. We're always in quarantine, so... <laughs> That's, I mean, there's not been much difference to my regular day-to-day. No. Like, unless I'm going to work, I just stay home There's anyways. been, like, a couple weekends over this quarantine where it's like, ah, I wish I could go down to the pub. Other than that. I wish I could go to... But other than that, I'm living the exact same life that I always do. Mm-hmm. Same clothes, you know, an outfit per week. Yeah, I shave once a week. You know, I, I just free trials, all the fucking free trials, new car, and yeah, new fucking email, get a new <laughs> streaming service. You know, just pirate and shit. Um, so where do you want to start? Because we have watched a ton of shit. Uh, you watched a new film yesterday, a new film to you. Uh, oh, you're about a year of, behind yeah, on the Avengers else. Endgame. <laughs> you finally <laughs> saw it. Finally saw it on April third, twenty twenty. Yeah, we finally so you, saw the Endgame. That's how little I cared about this but at the same time i really do like these movies to a degree they're all they're I, all I think right i've talked about it on the are. podcast before like i'm very spotty i've seen these like here and there you know i've seen maybe i haven't seen like any thors i haven't seen any iron men i've seen like the tobin Maguire spider-mans which have no reference here i've seen the x-men movies which is a completely different universe mm. and then maybe i've seen i've seen like doctor strange a deadpool which is a completely different universe like i haven't really paid much attention i don't think i've seen any avengers movies a while ago i watched the infinity war i was like this is cool it was like i skipped to the end it yeah. was like i've liked superheroes and comics my whole life i've seen bits and pieces like i get it you know what i mean it's like I'm not throwing on the second to last episode of Sopranos here trying to understand what's going on. <laughs> this is the Avengers. Like, okay, I get it. Well, watching Endgame, uh, how thoroughly did you understand it? I understood sure? it top to bottom. There, there, was, was, there wasn't anything that confused me. There was a few scenes when they started going back in time, you know, and they weren't like, oh, we're going to go back to this movie. 
And I was like, I don't really remember that. Like, I saw Doctor Strange, so, like, the Hulk storyline was very relevant to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I saw, like, the original Avengers when, like, all the Krull or whatever those fucking things are all over the walls. And yeah, shit. yeah. You know, so I, I understood certain things. Other ones when, like, they had Loki and Chains. And were, I hadn't seen that movie, but I'm sure it doesn't really matter. Well, that's that. at the end of the first Avengers as well. Oh, okay. Because Loki is... I the first Avengers is really vague for me, but I think Loki's one of the one of the villains in it, and then it ends with they they doesn't the, don't those sea monster things start coming into the sky? Yeah, but he has something to do with it. Oh, okay, he has something to do with it. Either way, I liked. I I mean, I liked it. I you know I be I think because I'm so detached from these movies, Star Wars, the Marvel movies, all that kind of stuff. Because I'm so like whatever about it, I can just watch them and solidly just enjoy the visuals and and what it is. And I can kind of pick them apart and laugh at them. I haven't had like 19 years of character building so that yeah. it's like how dare you say that about Scarlet Witch? How <laughs> dare you? you sh- Thanos took everything from her. You know yeah. I I. I you know, it's like whatever to me. I feel like it's all really just a slow edge to get to the fucking climax of the last hour. Yeah. You know, it, which is like, I mean, that edge is hard. That shit is some hard edge. It's a good last battle. It's it a is a great, battle. but I mean, it, it's really two hours of edging. And if yeah. you're fine with that, you that's know, cool. That's but it's thing. basically like people putting on the drag other people out of the muck hat. And so it's just kind of like, Oh, Iron Man's in the muck, so Captain America's got to drag him out of it. Then Captain America's in the muck, and Scarlett Johansson's got to drag him out of it. It's like everybody has their turn to like grieve somebody and then drag them out of the muck. Yeah. And then once everybody's kind of like done their little pity party and talking about how much they've lost, and everybody's <laughs> been like told in the best way they need to be told, they can all gather for the great final hour of that film. Yeah, and and none of them are just like. Just like, okay, let's do it. Like, let's just talk. No one is just like, okay, let's do it. It's like, my mother died. It's like, oh, my family. I was bad. Don't you give me hope. Don't you give me hope. I was bad. You know what? Take it. Take my badge. You know, it's just like. Oh. Oh, my. It's like that scene where it's like, you know what? You want my badge? You want my gun? It's that for two hours. It is. It really is. You want my badge? You want my gun for two hours. And it's also the scene when, like, they go and find, like, the the retired hero in the cabin in the woods. There's, like, four different cabins happens in the woods in four different planets and, and they go to them <laughs> and he's like, like chopping wood he's just chopping wood and then they come up family. in like a helicopter and he's like he kind of looks back at them he knows who they are and then like they, they all come out in suits and it's like yeah. we need you johnson yeah it's the first the only man minute, for the job it's the first 20 minutes of shooter for about two hours <laughs> and then and then an hour of like some really sick shit totally yeah i yeah so um it's not, a ho- a it's not a Hollywood botch. It's definitely worth It's not watch. a Hollywood botch. It's definitely worth a watch. Yeah. And, uh, you know, especially if you're into these movies. If uh, But you've already seen There's it. There's no point in There's even just... listening. You're just listening to, like, a really dumb guy who has no attachment to these movies. Yeah. Blabber on about it. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you, though. Um, in terms of all, like, the Avengers performances, do you have one that's, like... It, just acting wise, like you're like, oh, they they really do like a good job. They're yeah, three dimensional. Yeah. There's like, there's two people that really stand out to me. One is a is a personal favorite kind of thing, and that's Paul Rudd. But I think that my favorite, and I think the best actor, and who does the best job in them, and really stood out in this movie in particular, is Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk. That's what I was gonna say too. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk is fucking killer. Like it was insane. It was like I'm watching this fucking Hulk, like this Shrek animation kind of Hulk guy mixed with. Um, Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. And and it's just like he's acting the shit out of this. And the way they caught his little fucking inflection, like, she's not coming back. You know, we gotta get David. We gotta do it. Like, he's just not extra about it at all. Yeah, he's really He's good. just so smooth. It's just like, fuck. Like, there he is. Fucking fox catcher, fucking spotlight. Mark Ruffalo. Everybody. Yeah, and to be fair, I think he is, like, the best actor of them all. He's the only one who's, like, him and Scarlett Johansson. Like, they're the only ones who have, like, careers. Outside of yeah, those movies. But her character is just too cornily written. And then I'd say like the same for fucking like Downey Jr. Like Downey Jr. is like an all right actor. Like these movies definitely resurrected his career. And the, and the thing is, is with Downey Jr. is that he was born to play Tony Stark. Yeah, but at, like after how many movies of Tony Stark by the time you get to this? It's so one, like, oversaturated. I can't listen to this guy anymore. Yeah. I also hated the shoehorned like feminist scene at the end. That's the mo- that's the only time I really cringed at that movie. There's been other like through the entire 
Marvel MCU, there's been cringy moments, but that is really really cringy. And I'm no sexist man. No, let's have a disclaimer here. Everybody knows we are not sexist, misogynist. We are feminists. We are allies. I love women. I love them so much. I completely stay away from them. I love them so much. I don't even have sex with them. Exactly. <laughs> love women here. What's that We've, from? What's that? Is that Paul Rudd in Forty well, Year Old Virgin? And, well, it's not Paul Rudd. It's it's uh, Steve Carell. But he's like, I respect women. I respect them so of much. Of course, because I completely four- stay yeah. away from them. Yeah, of course. Great line. Great line. Nonetheless, that fucking scene where it's just like it's like Spider Man, and he's just like, How are you gonna get through all these enemies? And it's just like she has help. And then it's just it's all the women. It's all the women. It's just like, ugh, yikes. Like, it, it's just, it's it, the imagery of it's cool. If they just didn't even have any dialogue. Just like, oh, cool. That was a really sick scene. Like, it was just, did you notice that it was all female characters? It's like, oh, that's really awesome. I didn't even, and then like, you know, they made it kind of layered like that. But the fact that they just, it's very It just in your brings face. a spotlight to it. It's like, just, just have it happen. Just have it happen. It, it's like it was just so obviously like this set aside moment mm-hmm. to to showcase them and just be like, see, see, eh? fucking Disney eh? isn't all evil. Eh? Check it out. Yeah, we we you know we tried to kill some Jews in, in the forties, but you know what? <laughs> it's like we got women in fucking green screen yeah suits the in their movies. Shit. Yeah. Forget the the blackface crows and Dumbo. Yeah. Forget the Native American bullshit and Peter Pan. <laughs> We've got women standing together, and we yeah. know it. And We're we gonna make sure that you know that we know it. Yeah, because we know that you know that we know it, and that's great, and that's gonna keep you watching. Wouldn't it suck if every fucking entertainment thing became like Disney owned? How shitty would that be? Like, I mean, if- we're pretty much there. No, we're far. We're far from there. I'll sure like Disney is a fucking Disney owns a lot, but they don't own a lot. Disney's of a television. titan, to yeah. say the least. But they, you know, there's still a lot of shit they don't have their hands on. That's why, you know what? People always, like, make the theory that they're going to have a monopoly. And I could be wrong. But the only reason I don't think they will is I don't think Disney will ever get edgy. And that's the problem is because they're not ever willing to put that stuff to their name. They'll never take over entertainment in that way. But at the same time, there's probably shit that Disney owns that we don't even really know about. And there's probably elements that Disney has their hands in, and it's like they're pulling strings, and it's like they they haven't even been named for doing it, you know. You know, we just we haven't even seen it happen. Word. Um, another movie we watched, and uh, this is completely different than Avengers Endgame, budget wise, year wise, everything. Yeah, we watched uh, P. T. Anderson, Paul Thomas Anderson's first movie. Neither of us had seen it. We both no. knew of it though. Saw it on Crave. This is Hard Eight. All right, I gotta take a piss. You just give the people a little background. Let on me this. just let me just. I'll paint the picture. Uh, so Hard Eight, like I said, Paul Thomas Anderson's first movie. Uh, it stars Philip Baker Hall. Uh, now you people uh, may know him as uh, he's the library cop in Seinfeld. He is uh, also in Boogie Nights. He's like the the big producer. Uh, I think they call him like the commissioner in Boogie Nights, and he's like the big porno producer. Um, he's fucking. He's in all the Paul Thomas Anderson movies. He's also in Magnolia, and one of those guys like you know him to see him. You've definitely seen him in something. Uh, but it also has John C. Riley, Samuel Jackson, uh, and a young Gwyneth Paltrow. the The idea of the film is essentially. Uh, John C. Riley is in uh, Down and Out Gambler, uh, trying to pay for his mother's funeral by winning big in Vegas. And Philip Baker Hall's character, who's called uh, Sydney, and it uh, finds him and kind of takes him under his wing, and it goes from there. Exactly. Really cool movie. Really cool. Uh, kind of like if you're into like the noir style, uh, it has that kind of early Tarantino, early Cohen kind of feel to it. It's like someone who obviously has a really good grip on how f- movies work and, and cinematography and all that. Really good grip, but just kind of their introduction to the Hollywood world. And uh, it's great. I'm sure like film students love this shit. Mm. Totally. Well, that's what I think we were saying, that The Hard Eight is kind of this perfect middle ground between Cohen brothers and Tarantino. Yeah. 
it's like it's the it's the absurd wackiness character study of the Cohen brothers, but with the gritty crime elements of of a Tarantino movie. Yeah. And it's this really good bridge. And yeah. I, I fucking love that guy. Um he you know, he he's a he's a super versatile director in the ways of uh the Cohen brothers are. Very much so. And definitely like in that category. Like I mean he's um it directed so many movies that I would put in my like my top twenty list, you know. Totally, there will be blood. Boogie Nights are two of my favorite films of all. The time. Master, I love. Um, oh man, The Master is so good. You know, uh, uh, Inherent Vice. Even though it's fucking this weird fucking movie, I battle with every day. Really good looking movie. Like he's a cool director. You know? We do battle with that like close every day. That movie, at least, no joking aside, we talk about Inherent Vice at least maybe once a week. It's crazy. I, I talk about it more than I talk about some of my favorite movies of all time. Like Big Lebowski is probably is an arguable contender for my favorite movie of all time, and I do not talk about it near as much as I talk about Inherent Vice. And that's something to be said. There is something to be and, said. And every about once that. in a while, I think about throwing it on. Like, did you get me that movie for my birthday? I did. I bought you it. Did get that, it for yeah. me. And uh, I remember just like just putting it on every once in a while and you know get a little further each time or i'd watch a second like and you want to understand you want to like it and it's like it's everything i love like it's it's basically like i'm so glad once upon a time in hollywood came out because it like it basically satisfied the blue balls that inherent vice gave me. <laughs> yeah yeah that's exactly right that I've been and once upon a time, time in hollywood couldn't have been done by anybody better than tarantino exactly um so sorry pt Sorry, PT. Punch Drunk Love. That was the other movie I was trying to kind of ponder there. Yeah, totally. Magnolia as well. Magnolia is fucking awesome. And Hard Eight. Add that to your list. If you're a fan of these movies, make sure you go watch Hard Eight. Hard Eight. Well, if you're a PT Anderson fan, you probably have already seen it. If not, though, if you just want a cool fucking crime movie to watch with some great acting. Available on Prime. Available on Prime. Hard Eight is. Yeah. Do what Luke and I did. Uh, Check out fucking Hard Eight. Um, Now. Uh, you know, uh, we can talk about maybe, uh, these are two movies we watched together. Um, what's, what's something you watched without me? What's something that, uh, what's something, what's a guilty pleasure you've been Well, I don't know if we into? call it a guilty pleasure. I'd like to talk a little bit about this movie though, and I might take some flack on this because it seems to be very popular amongst the current culture. But I watched this movie Booksmart. Uh, a little while ago I heard a lot about it when the Oscar buzz was coming out this year a lot of people were raving about this movie and these girls in in this movie was really good this movie is essentially two teenage girls graduating realize that they've wasted their whole high school life worrying about grades and never partied never had a fun time in their life so now they're going to live it up on their last day their big graduation night (coughs) basically first impression of this was that it was super bad with women it felt like ghostbusters or oceans eight it was the female reboot of super bad. exactly but they gave it a different name called it book smart but basically the same idea but just way less funny and way less good and just really just you want to shoehorn is the perfect word for this because once again i you know I'm not even going to say it. We're fucking allies. We're friends here. I get it. But this fucking movie, man, I really, like, it had so much going on. It had Will Forte and Jason Sudeikis and Lisa Kudrow. Just these, like, a bunch of really, like, old actors and, and good fucking comedians. All the adults in it were fucking hilarious. The adults were fantastic. All the parents and stuff. And the two girls were really funny, too. But the writing... It just kept veering into this weird zone, and I liked where they were going with it. It had had some funny stuff, and I did kind of laugh out loud at a couple jokes in it. But then, like, for example, one of the characters is a lesbian. Awesome. Just make that a fucking plot point. That's all good and everything. She's in love with this one girl. She's really into this girl, and she's kind of this skater punk tomboy girl. And there's this one point where they have a conversation, and they're like, I don't even know if she's into dudes. Like, she's obviously into dudes. It's like, look at how she dresses. Like, well, that's how she presents her gender. That's not what her sexuality is. And gender and sexuality are two separate. It's like, sorry, like, do you need to interject the PSA? Because it was also weird for the two characters to be talking about it. It's like they're best friends and they obviously have the same ideology. That was not for the characters to discuss. That was for the audience. To that's hear. shitty fucking PC exposition right there. And it was just countless. There was just countless shit like that through the whole fucking thing. It was like 
At one point, they totally rip off the Harold and Kumar Christmas thing where they get high and then they kind of like show up in like an animation world. Yeah, yeah. Harold and Kumar did it. Trailer Parks Boys did it. It's like when high guys like, whoa, we're cartoons. Yeah, yeah. 21 Drum Street kind of did it. It's it's a done gag. It's a done gag. I, I think maybe to say that they the ripped something w- off. Is is, Anyways, is a little harsh. They, they didn't rip up, but they did, kind of did the classic. It's, it's a cliche. Yeah, yeah. But it really re- it was really reminiscent because Harold and Kumar really drove it home. Like they have that whole Christmas scene where like, whoa, we're claymation. Let's see what we can do with our. Dicks. And they're self aware of the fact of the claymation. Exactly. And it was like, but yeah. it's this, but they were Barbie dolls. And then the whole fucking scene, instead of like just being like weird and trippy, it was all like, look at my proportions. These aren't the proper proportions for a woman. This isn't anatomically correct. I can't actually. And it was just like, oh, look at all the. F- Yes, Barbie is. Yeah, it's, it's something we all knew, and it's just like you don't need to yeah. reiterate. So, this. to totally be honest, I fucking shut it off. Like, I didn't even make it to the end. How I got far about did you 45 make it? Five minutes in. How far did you make it? About forty-five minutes, hour and a half, maybe. When you can't finish an hour and a half teen comedy, was there like a certain point? Like, was there a really cringy point where you were like, had it was to turn the, it, it off? It was. It was just after like the Barbie, shit. or was it just like I'm not paying attention to this? It was I'm after after the Barbie shit, and then like some stuff was going on, and I was like, I don't know. And they were kind of having like that mid second act like moment where they kind of like tell the truths to one another, and I was like, I don't even give a fuck about this. <laughs> So that was a piece of shit I watched by myself. Yeah, dog. That I would say is a Hollywood botch. A Hollywood botch. Um, well, uh, I'm just going to take a second uh, because I got to talk uh, about the anime I'm watching because that's all I watch on my own. Right, for the weebs out there listening. For you weebs out there like myself uh, who are listening that love anime like me. <laughs> have you watched? Uh, I'm watching Hero Academia right now. And uh, I watched it alone because Luke, you're not you're not really too into the anime. Not right? a big anime guy, no, not myself. Yeah, you find it's too silly. It's too like it's too like ridiculous, and you're just it just kind of makes you cringe, I guess. Like, uh, I wouldn't say that as much. Like, there's definitely like elements of that. I don't I don't know what it is exactly. It's because you like some anime. <clears throat> I like it, and I like the art form, and I respect the art form, and some of it looks really cool. I like it in doses. I have a very particular taste when it comes to anime. I guess um, I like I like more like I guess anime movies. I know there's a lot of people that are into these kind of like 500 episode series, and I guess yeah. I just can't invest my time into that. Like the One Piece and the Naruto, uh, all this yeah. Naruto and all that shit. Yeah, I, I can't do it. Yeah, man. Um, but but a good a good anime movie that's like tall, solid. I really like like Red Line is always one of my favorites. I like it's really silly and absurd. It's just an hour and a half of cool shit to look at. And yeah, music and shit. But overall, I'm not a huge fan of the medium. I, I uh, I see. I originally watched it. Uh, like I've always had this love for it, but never always wanted to get into it, but just never did. And originally, I like I justified it as I was like, oh, I just want to watch it to watch some cool shit. But once I started like getting down and actually watching some, some like just anime shows, like I I started to get really invested in it. Like uh, first one I watched, and I I got to give it up. It was like my gateway into good anime was Neon Genesis Evangelion, which is still my favorite too. It's still if in terms of anime shows it's it's my favorite i i would recommend that to anybody i recommend it to you uh, i think it's it's just fucking amazing it's it's like kubrick styled fucking writing and it's beautiful it's beautiful beautiful program um but you know that's led me into uh you know some other shows that are really maybe more badass but not quite as deep uh you know demon slayer Demon Slayer, I love so much that I, I've started to read the mangas now. Uh, I've got I've got like four of the mangas, and I'm continuing the story because I'm so invested. And now I'm watching Hero Academia, and it's fucking you know very similar to Demon Slayer. It's it's deep. It's not like you know fucking philosophical break your mind deep or anything. But you know it, it's the characters are three dimensional, and it's a, it's a fun show to watch. And right. uh, those are uh, that's an- Alex's anime accommodations or i'm trying to think of three a words alex's anime accolades accolades those you know so that's your list listeners next week i'm gonna test you on it 
All right. All right. So, uh, any we... other honorable mentions? Movies we watched, people should check out. Oh, what happened? What, what, did we watch something else? I don't know. Well, we watched Tiger King. Everyone's been talking Everyone's about Tiger Titan, King. You know, you yeah. either watched it and you're exactly where we are, or you haven't, and you probably should watch it soon. Yeah, because it, it, you're gonna watch it in a day if you fire up Tiger King. Exactly. It's the quarantine show. It's it's the quarantine. If show. If you're in quarantine, which everybody is. Watch Tiger King. It's, the thing is, this is a point where Tiger King is synonymous with COVID-19. It will always be remembered that way. It'll be like it'll be like those Olympics that happened during the war. Yeah. The Berlin Olympics. It's whatever. like they're, they're synonymous. Uh, I don't know. Uh, can, any other honorable mentions you can think of? Uh, I mean, not too much, man. Uh, I rewatched uh, I we- Think You Should Leave, which is a fucking hilarious sketch comedy show on, on Netflix, Netflix, if anybody yeah. hasn't watched it. That one is hilarious. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, the new season of Westworld's out. I haven't watched any of that, but we'll probably be talking about well, that. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that next, next episode or something. I yeah. mean, yeah. I mean, everybody's watching shit. So if uh, we haven't mentioned it or you think we should watch it and talk about it, leave it in the comments. Leave it in the comments, Let baby. Let us know. Let us we'll know. We'll check it out. And we'll check it out. Yeah, hell yeah. And if we think of anything else, then it's probably on a hot cast that will never be released, maybe, exactly. or something. I don't know. All right. That well, was House on the Movies, baby. House on the baby. Movies, everybody. House on the Movies. Don't share your popcorn. Get your own bag. When you watch these movies. Well, unfortunately, we don't have a Wayne segment tonight because, as with the quarantine, it's hard to get your hands on this shit. We're not going out for unnecessary items. Exactly. Yeah. Luke and I. So we're actually going to do a uh, a take on this. I didn't really tell you about this, but I'd like to, to do this. Uh, it's basically uh, what we call, uh, it's kind of a quarantine edition. It's the uh, toilet paper testing oh right Ooh. so instead of uh, tasting wine we're going to basically uh try out a brand of toilet paper right here on the air uh and uh just kind of tell you our take on it and uh i mean it's something we can all appreciate right sounds now. like fun all right let's do it what did you wipe your ass with what did you do to make it so clean let me see just like that shaman day Toilet paper testing. All right, so I brought a roll here, Alex. This is uh, Signal. This is uh, as cheap as it gets. This is the, <laughs> the most basic of toilet papers. Uh, some people might out there might be out there trying Signal for the first time right now because some it was all that was available. Even not even seen a roll of toilet paper in months. You know, so just even the sheer talk about it will uh, will will excite people. Now this is a simple. Uh, Two ply, nary a two ply at all though. Uh, cheap toilet paper you can get. This is about three dollars on the shelves. I don't know if any's available where you are, but this is Signal. I'm gonna try it out first here. Now, what are you trying? Are you wiping your ass with it? What exactly? Well, I was just gonna drop trow and maybe just give it a wipe here, just give it a dry wipe, just to kind of get the full experience. You're gonna, I'm you already gotta. You gotta go it. all the I'm way. Already, I'm already doing it. I'm already doing it. Oh wow, he's doing it. He's okay. He's un. Yeah, he's going for. Okay, I'm gonna look away because I do not want to see this. Um... <clears throat> oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna just do these up real quick. Yeah, I did. Well, just hold on. Throw that in the garbage or something. Yeah, well, maybe I'll not just... throw that in my garbage. Well, yeah, I'll just pose that way. Anyway, that is fantastic. You know, it does the job, gets the job done. It's a little rough around the edges, but uh, I wouldn't recommend this if you have any kind of irritation or any problems with that already down there. But, I mean, if uh, you're just trying to give a good solid wipe, uh, this stuff's awesome. recommend getting yourself a a pack of Signal. It's cheap. It gets the job done. I'm going to give it uh, a five rolls out of seven. Well, you know, that's a big recommendation. Uh, I'm going to plead the fifth. On the uh, on trying out the signal because okay. I I don't want to drop trowel. Maybe just give me a little piece. Let me give give me a little piece. Here, so just maybe rub, rub that on your face. Let me something. just rub it on my face like a Charmin bear. Mm. Yeah, just rub it on your face because that's what they they love that stuff. They just rub it on their face. They rub it on their face. They rub their whole bodies in it. They probably fuck with it. Yeah, they love to their toilet paper. Now, okay, they, that's what I'll say. So I'm feeling the signal. I'm feeling on my face. Excuse me. You know, and I'm getting a feel for it. I will say it's no Charmin. 
No, Ooh, it's no. no, it's 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 nary a Charmin. No, uh, it's it's a little rough. It's a, it's to me, it's kind of uh, uh, maybe a step above prison grade uh, toilet paper. It's it's what you buy if it wasn't fucking quarantine season, yeah. or you weren't cheap as fuck, or it's whatever. Like, it's like you had a a book of braille, and you you use the sheets to wipe with. It's that. so bumpy. It's so bumpy. It's so bumpy. Yeah, there's actually secret messages in it, and I've been slowly reading them with my asshole. <laughs> what do they say? Uh, lots of weird things. You know that it's all a hoax. Um, you know that uh, that Bernie Sanders is an alien. All kinds of shit like that. Wow, wow. We so we are uncovering. I'll uh, I'll keep writing them down. I mean, this is the kind of stuff you do in a quarantine is read the messages and the signal braille bumps on your wow. asshole. Yeah, this is what you do. Wow, we're uncovering shit while we uncover shit. <laughs> Certainly so. Dude, whoa, uh, man. Well, I think that's been enough for our viewers. Everybody, this has been something we're going to keep going through the quarantine. This is the toilet paper testing. Ooh, baby. I feel so clean. Can't get my hands on anything. Gonna try that paper Gonna give it a rater Tell you which one to buy In the quarantine All right, something new we're trying So that was a fun new segment Uh, And we don't know how long this quarantine's gonna last But, you know I'm sure we'll have at least another show during this quarantine That's my speculation Most likely Based upon the, the, the... the the you know how often we release shows and how exactly. long this quarantine is going to last we'll probably have another one exactly by, while this is all happening exactly um and and like Luke said we're not gonna because we were driving around and we drove by the LCBO lineup around the corner we just kept on driving and went it was to the raining. beer store I'm went to tra- the beer store not a soul in the place and what's the deal why just nobody wants beer right now well I mean I think it's like some people might want beer but they also got to pick up some Baileys or a couple bottles of wine or whatever. It's like, luckily, it's like, if you're not picky, you just go out there, be smart, pick the right time, go to the right place, you'll be okay. You know what's funny about the beer store was is that we went there and there was like a line of people outside of the beer store. Kind of six feet apart, there was like maybe seven people. One dude smoking, one dude sitting there mucking a box of fucking Timbits and Tim's coffee. Another guy just kind of like mending his like, little scooter i don't know yeah and then we're like oh shit there's a line i got up i was like hey guys this is a lineup they're like no 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 go right in they're I'm just like, hanging oh, it's out. just a bunch of skids outside the fucking <laughs> the bar, the yeah store. we're just hanging out fucking <clears throat> like what is so they it's like thinking? it was pissing rain on a friday afternoon during a quarantine and there are seven people six feet apart hanging out front eating timbits and fixing their rascals <laughs> Must be Peterborough, man. Must be fucking Peterborough. Like, and it's it's fucking Corona season. Like, it's like, what are you doing? Why? Like, it's just like, I just want to wait in line like everyone else. I don't have money to spend on shit, but, but I'm just gonna enjoy the ride. Yeah, exactly. Like, just go home, chill. This is the best time that you can just be a freeloader if you want to be. Yeah, like, just sit at home and and just chill out. What else are you gonna fucking do? Uh, let's give a little shout out though. We were at the beer store and we picked ourselves up a nice. Let's get a nice clink for the. Get yeah. one more in there. Oh, that was good. um, yeah, that was a good one. We're uh, drinking bottles, bottles of Laker ice. Laker ice. That's ah. right. We're sticking to the case, sticking to the dramatically sealed case from the factory. Yeah, where it was, where it was sanitized and everything. We're not getting individual no one's cans. With that shit. No one's fucking with that. No one's fucking. No one's fucking with those individual cans or anything people could touch. Get the fucking shit that's in a case, glued tight, still sanitized, and when you get home, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Be safe. You know what? I feel like it's just like every... I mean, we're still... For the two people that are going to listen to this, (laughs) we owe it to them to still promote this message. Just wash your hands. Yeah. Be smart. Be safe. Don't be an asshole. Let's all get through this together. But I'm sure the people that are listening to it are fucking way smarter than us, so they probably are ready of doing this shit. Um, Let me just end the show on a, a funny little anecdote. Okay. Um... I uh, I heard now this is a little while back uh, I'd say probably maybe about two months ago and I just haven't had a chance to uh, I don't know keep forgetting to tell you keep forgetting to just say it on the podcast because this is it's a weird one so there's this guy 
mm. who works at Walmart, okay. my Walmart, and uh, I'll he'll remain uh, nameless, you know, to save his uh, uh, identity to keep his anonymity. Okay. Um, but he he was at one point a Walmart greeter, and he quit to become a food sampler at Costco. Uh, but he's one of those guys who always complained about how much he hated the job, but now comes, he comes there every he day comes to there visit. A visit. Yeah, he comes to Walmart more often than when he fucking worked there now. Sure. Just to kind of talk, he's like, I fucking love Costco. Oh, oh my, my life God. is so good now. It's just like, I can't, you fucking jokers, the fucking, I don't know why he's a southern accent. <laughs> but, um... He's a, and the thing is, is that at the end of the day, the guy's a dumbass. Sure, you, you know, I don't know how to put it nicely. He's a, he's an idiot, yeah. a buffoon. Yeah, and uh, he comes in. And he's starting to talk because obviously he wants to come in and talk shit about Walmart and talk about like coronavirus, but there's nobody around that that he wants to talk to so he he comes up to me and there's this other kid there and they were you know these guys who've never really interacted with them <laughs> at all and he right. comes up and he just out of the note out of the blue he's like you guys need some limes need some limes and uh, yeah and he's just like yeah because of that coronavirus oh it's just like oh nice segue nice segue out of the blue to talk about that thing you already wanted to talk about Need some limes. And then he... Uh, so anyways, then he starts telling us about all his facts and all his facts and figures and how he's been researching it. Uh, how many people are going to die, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but the one fucking thing, and this is where I was, was like, this is when... This is when this is a great example of when memes get into the wrong hands. Mm. He started going on about how he's like, there's this video game and it's about a virus. And... The the pandemic uh, association that they set up in in China used the same symbol as the evil corporation in this game that that uh, that Ugh. made the virus. And I'm like Resident Evil. Yeah, you're talking about Resident Evil, right? With Umbrella Corp and with Umbrella Corp and all that shit. I'm like, you're talking about Resident Evil, dude. And I was trying to explain to him, like, dude, it's just a game, and that's just a meme, man. Like, there's no. There's no that was just fucking some clever memeing. It, that was just some clever memeing and fucking Capcom. The guys who made the game have nothing to do with fucking coronavirus. And he and you know, and the dude's like old too. He's not like some young guy who yeah. knows actually. This what was to promote the third remake. It, it, yeah, exactly. And it was it was just like, dude, you're a fucking idiot. So I guess it's just that's a great example of when when good memes get into the. The bad hands. That's true, man. I hear you there. Well, on that note, watch your memeing. Make sure you're paying attention to the right news. And I mean, we can't say it enough. Uh, we'll probably come up with another podcast soon. We got nothing else better to do. Yeah, hell yeah. But for the time being, I'm Spooky Luffy. I'm Anonymous Disco. And this has been the Hogcast. Thanks the for Hogcast. listening, everybody. Stay safe. Like, subscribe, do all that shit, comment, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Love you.